right. So, so let's talk about Sinwa. Uh, so Sinwa um, has been the, the, the political leader uh, of, uh, of Hamas for the last few months since the uh, Hania, the previous political leader of, of Hamas, uh, was assassinated by Israel uh, while sleeping <laughs> uh, in uh, Tehran, in the middle of Iran, uh, in the middle of the capital of Iran, in a spectacular intelligence operation. Uh, one of, you know, go down as one of the great intelligence operations ever, uh, together with the, the beepers and everything else. But that's pretty amazing. It, Tehran is far away, and their ability to infiltrate and kill him was, was just amazing. Anyway, um, uh, at that point, Sinwa basically became the unquestionable, total, complete leader of Hamas. Uh, uh, before that, he was the military leader, the, the, the recognized military leader, and had been since, I think, uh, the, the 2017 or something around then, uh, as the military leader in Gaza uh, uh, of, uh, of Hamas. Uh, let's do a little bit, little bit of the history of Sinwa, and then we'll get into what actually happened today. Sinwa was born in 1962, so he's uh, a year younger than me. Um, uh, he uh, was born in Khan Yunus, uh, in a, what is called, but is, is wrongly called, I think, by now, a, a, a refugee camp uh, within uh, Gaza. Uh, and um, he, uh, uh, you know, at a, at a pretty young age, 1985, so at uh, 23, he already start. Uh, this is before Hamas was even established, uh, he helped organize something called uh, uh, Al-Majad, which is, means glory in Arabic, which uh, was an organization for jihad. Uh, and uh, Al-Majad was a network of Islamic youths uh, who tasked themselves with exposing Palestinian informants uh, to Israel, uh, informants who had been recruited by Israel over the years. In 1987, when Hamas was formed, Ahmadjad was kind of folded into it and became, if you will, part of its internal security cadre, given that they had now this expertise in rooting out and finding uh, spies, informants. Uh, you know, it's during this period and then solidified later on that uh, uh, Sinwa got the nickname of the butcher of uh, the butcher of... Um, of Khan Yunus, uh, they uh, not only found informants, informants are non informants, but they accused people of informants, but they also uh, killed uh, quite a few of them. And uh, during this period, uh, Sinwa was also involved in terrorist attacks against Israel and the killing of several Israeli uh, soldiers. Indeed, uh, in 1989, um, Sinwa was convicted. Uh, was arrested by the Israelis and convicted of murder of Palestinians and Israelis, um, and he got, uh, for that, four life sentences. And he served in Israeli prison from 1989 on, right? Now, uh, while he was in prison, uh, he was like a, you know, like a mafia leader. He, he became the unequivocal leader of uh, Palestinian uh, terrorist, uh, terrorists uh, incarcerated in Israel. Um, he uh, maintained a powerful sway over the other prisoners. He used all kinds of tactics, uh, uh, manipulation, abuse, uh, and basically, and he had constant connections with outside the prison, just like a, a mafia uh, dude would do. Uh, he would punish fellow prisoners that he suspected if they were informants um, and, and continued kind of the killing of the people uh, he thought were working with the Israelis. At some point, he even managed to get 1,600 prisoners to participate in a hunger strike um, uh, that he led. Uh, during this period in prison, he also spent a lot of time studying, studying Israeli culture, Israeli society. He would read Israeli newspapers regularly. He studied Hebrew. He became fluent in Hebrew uh, in the process. So uh, this is an incredibly intelligent, was an incredibly intelligent guy who, who really dedicated himself to understanding uh, what he perceived as the enemy. Of course, during this time when Sinwal was in prison, uh, a lot of things happened outside of prison. Uh, the Oslo Accords in, uh, uh, in the early 90s, uh, the, the Second Intifada in the early uh, 2000s, uh, 
Uh, and uh, the control of Gaza, uh, the withdrawal of Israel from Gaza, right? The withdrawal of Israel from all Israel and all Jews from Gaza. And then the, uh, the uh, basically the Hamas eradicating the Palestinian Authority, killing them, kicking them out of Gaza and establishing full control over Gaza. That was all done while Sinwa was, uh, was uh, in jail. Uh, in uh, 2006, in 2006, uh, Hamas uh, abducted an Israeli soldier who was uh, who was uh, stationed at a border crossing uh, on guard duty, uh, and they abducted him. and And for years, there were discussions about getting him released and cutting a deal with Hamas to get him released. Uh, so this is 2006, before they had full control over Gaza. By 2007, they were the sole masters of Gaza. And anyway, ultimately, Egypt and, and Germany secured a deal uh, for the release of Shalit, whereby he was released and a thousand, a thousand uh, terrorists, a thousand prisoners uh, within the Israeli system were released. And one of those was uh, Sinwar. Indeed, his brother, Mohammed Sinwa, we'll talk about Mohammed Sinwa in a little bit. Mohammed Sinwa, who was guarding, one of the guards guarding Shalit, uh, was one of the people who insisted that Sinwa be included in the exchange. Uh, so uh, uh, Sinwa was one of the first people, first set of Palestinian prisoners who returned to the Gaza Strip. Uh, when he arrived, uh, he was hailed as a hero. I mean, his reputation as having controlled uh, the prison and, and, and gained huge influence uh, and, and that reputation, um, you know, led to within a few years, uh, basically, you know, within a few months. So by April 2012, uh, Sinwar is elected to Hamas political bureau and becomes one of the leaders of uh, Hamas. Uh, it, it, during this time, he pulls the factions together by compromise and bloodshed, just like a good... Uh, you know, uh, Mafia Don does. Um, and uh, uh, again, uh, you know, continued, uh, you know, he, he, he learned from the Shalit's example uh, the, and, and from learning about Israeli society and understanding Israeli society. Uh, one of his real pushes within Hamas was to capture hostages, get Israeli hostages, get them into Gaza because Israel valued its people so much that you could get massive concessions uh, from the Israelis. Uh, he had also, uh, during his years in prisons, basically become committed to the fact that there was no compromise with Israel. There was no recognition of Israel. There was no viable, call it two-state solution. Uh, Sinwar came to understand that there was only one solution, and that was the complete destruction of Israel. In, you know, uh, in one of his public statements, public appearances, he said, uh, gone is the time in which Hamas discusses recognition of Israel. The discussion now is about when we will wipe out Israel. And he really dedicated himself to the wiping out of Israel and doing whatever it could, he could to weaken Israel and to find weaknesses in Israel and to use those weaknesses to try to destroy uh, the state of Israel. Uh, he was also incredibly shrewd, a politician, if you will, so that didn't prevent him from negotiating with Israel. That didn't prevent him from putting out a Hamas charter that was mildly um, a, a more, um, uh, less radical than the original Hamas charter that just called for the wiping out of Israel. Uh, he, he, his, his belief is you could lull Israel to sleep. Part of their strategy, his grand strategy, was to lull Israel to sleep. To, to make them believe Hamas would negotiate, to make them believe Hamas uh, was not interested in wiping Israel out, so that when the day came, uh, they could actually execute on their, on their grand strategy. Um, in um, in uh, 2015, the United States uh, designated him a, uh, a terrorist. Um, and in, uh, in uh, uh, you know, 2017, Sinwa was elected the head of Hamas in the Gaza Strip and head of its military wing. Um, so from 2017 until really October, 
2023, Sunwa was committed to uh, building up Hamas's military strength, uh, improving its relationships with Islamist regimes around the world, uh, uh, primarily with Iran. He, he was responsible for building up uh, the relationship between Hamas and Iran and getting Iran and Qatar to fund the, the, the massive investment in tunnels and weapons and training and weapon systems that went into the Hamas you know, uh, establishment within, uh, within Gaza. The money also went to you know, keeping the Gazan people from uh, coming after Hamas, so a lot of money was distributed to them. Life for some people in Gaza was not that bad. But bulk of the money, without any question, went to building all those tunnels you've seen videos of and, and acquiring all those weapon systems. Uh, you know, Sinwa was the mastermind of all of that, of the tunnel system, of the, of the weapons systems, of the harassing Israel, but never uh, not, not getting them to the point of a, a real war with Israel, which he knew he would, uh, he would lose. Uh, building up to something more major, something more substantial that Sinwa hoped would rally uh, those parts of the Arab world, uh, those parts of the Muslim world that really wanted to see the destruction of Israel. Sinwa had o also come to the conclusion that Israel was not ready for an all-out fight, that Israel didn't want an all-out fight, that Israel could compromise, negotiate, make a deal. That is ultimately the history of uh, Israel with Hamas up until October 7th. Um, and that, again, if hostages were taken, uh, Israel would prioritize the hostages above all else. And, and that leads us, of course, to October 7th, 2023, which is a plan executed by Sinwa. We talked a few days ago about the documents that we received that, that um, Israeli intelligence, I guess, leaked to the New York Times about uh, kind of the planning uh, for October 7th, about the fact that uh, it was uh, fully, co fully uh, you know, coordinated, if you will, with the Iranians and the attempt to try to get the Iranians more involved, try to get Hezbollah more involved, try to make this a whole regional attack on Israel. Um, and uh, that really Sinwa was running out of time. Uh, Israel was gaining these, was going to get these laser weapons that would make his rockets a lot less effective. Um, uh, he was worried that his plans would leak and the Israelis would be ready for it. Uh, and uh, Sinwa, in spite of the fact that he, Iran would not give him the full commitment to fully endorse and fully support what he did, uh, launched October, October 7th massacre. Uh, and notice the explicit goal of that attack was to get as many hostages as possible. Kill, rape, pillage, put the fear of Allah into the Israelis, uh, uh, destroy their morale, destroy their spirit, try to inspire by doing so. Think about the sickness that this involves. Try to inspire by doing so uh, the other Islamist regimes around the Middle East to uh, ultimately attack Israel, inspire by the, the, the massacre, inspire by the death, inspire by the destruction. Uh, but to guarantee their success, uh, take hostages. Take hostages because you know the Israelis will not let the hostages die. They will compromise. They will sell out in order to get the hostages released. And that was the strategy. And the strategy was not completely wrong, but Israel responded, and I think the trauma to Israeli society was such that Israel responded in a much, much tougher way than Sinwa expected and that I expected. I didn't expect the kind of response that we've received. I still think it, it wasn't tough enough, but it was certainly tougher than what I expected. If you go back and listen to my shows from early in September, you'll see that I, I didn't expect them to be this good. And uh, this has led ultimately to the complete destruction or the almost complete destruction of Gaza, uh, the, the destruction of the entire Hamas, or almost the entire Hamas leadership, um, and the one missing piece, really, the big missing piece to date was Sinwa. As we said, the political leader leadership lost its leader uh, in Tehran. They also lost a significant leader in Beirut um, uh, a few months ago. Uh, and then uh, a few months ago, they also lost the, the, the uh, military leader under Sinwa, uh, uh, Daf, 
who was who was uh, assassinated, and then finally today, uh, Sinwa was killed uh, in uh, in Rafah, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, basically, at this point, the, 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 there's very little senior leadership of Hamas left. Uh, there are three main players probably left. Uh, one is uh, Mohammed Sinwa, uh, Sinwa's brother, uh, who is uh, who is in a leadership position as as being kind of Sinwa's number two, um, and uh, is is still there, is still alive, um, and um, is going to try to get Hamas regrouped. There are two kind of uh, regional uh, leaders, one from the Rafa area and one from the Khan Yunus, uh, not the Khan Yunus area, but uh, from the Gaza City area that are still alive. The, the, the head of the Khan Yunus division, if you want to call it, was killed with Sinwa. They, they were killed together in the same, in, this morning in the same uh, attack. So Hamas has lost uh, uh, thousands and thousands of its fighters and they have lost uh, much of its leadership team. Uh, a significant majority of its leadership team uh, has been killed. And certainly uh, now they still have in Qatar, uh, Mashal. Mashal is, uh, is, I guess, their political leader, will be, and is probably Hamas's leader de facto now that Sinwa is gone. Um, and uh, they still have a, a team of people in Qatar. I mean, it would be amazing if the Americans today ordered the Qataris to kick Hamas out of Qatar. I mean, that would be, that would set everything in motion to complete destruction and I think surrender of Hamas. Uh, they won't do that. The U.S. won't do that. You remember the U.S. has massive influence and power over the, uh, the Qataris. Uh, our largest military base in the Middle East is in Qatar, uh, but they won't do that. Uh, all right, so, uh, so that is where we are. Hamas has dwindling leadership talent, if you will. But still, thousands of armed fighters. 